welcome back. I'm so excited for today's video. So, this is going to be, I guess what you would call a hodgepodge video. I have several little DIYs that I've done, but they weren't really long enough to warrant their own video. So, I thought I would just combine them into this one video. Now, there's no particular theme to this video. It's just random DIYs that I've done. And I love the way each and every one turned out. And I wanted to share it with you. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then let's just get started. DIY number one. So this is a piece I found last year at one of the Renault properties. It was in the trash and I thought I could do something with it. And I just loved all the different textures and shapes on it. So this is a paint I mixed up. I was looking for a more of a turquoise teal color, but it, this turned out more of like a, a blue. But in the end, it turns out it's not the exact color I wanted, but it works. So I'm just going over it really well with my brush and I'm making sure to get all in all the nooks and crannies. There's a lot of little spaces you have to get in. And that big blue circle in the center, that's actually a mirror that I've already taped up with my painter's tape so I don't get my paint on it. But I go over this and I did have to give it two coats. I don't show you me giving it two coats, but I did do two coats on it. But I love all the textures on it. So after I get my two coats on it, then I'm going to take this Kiehl's Dark Wax. My mother gave me this. I've never used it before, so I thought I would try it to kind of deepen up the color. And I start out with my paper towel, but it's just not doing what I want it to. So I grab this like stiff brush and I'm able to get all in those little nooks and crannies so it can like really accentuate the detail of this piece. So I'm just putting it on my brush and then I'm wiping off the excess with my paper towel. And I really like the way this looks. And the good thing about this wax is you can go darker in areas that you want it, lighter in areas you want. So I really liked using it. I, I plan on using it again for sure. So I just go over this and I'm just really trying to highlight all the pretty detail on this piece. I just think it is absolutely beautiful. And I love the color that the wax is actually making it. It's toning down that blue. It don't look so blue. And it really looks, looks good. the mirror so then I'm gonna clean it with my glass cleaner and get all that cleaned up really well and then I have this cute little bird that I printed off from graphic fairies I will link them down below it's a free printable and I just cut it out and I'm just gonna put it in the center of this mirror with my Mod Podge I'm gonna put some on the back of my little bird and then I'm gonna place it on my mirror where I want it and I'm also gonna take my brush and just make sure all the edges are really good and sealed Try not to get too much Mod Podge on the mirror, but you know it happens. And you can't really tell here, but you could see the white of the paper underneath the bird. So I took my brush that had the wax left on it and kind of dirtied up the mirror some. And I'm still trying to make sure it's, those edges are sealed. And then I take my antique wax by Waverly and really kind of put it on the mirror. And I really love the way that it, it made it look. I wish I would have had mercury glass the technique to do for mercury glass, but this work. And this is how it turned out, and I love it. I love all the detail. So for DIY number two, y'all are not gonna believe this, but this is a wood wick candle lid, and I could not throw it away. I was like, I can do something with this. So I sanded it down, and then I had this piece of wire. I'm not even sure where this wire come from, and I had these little beads. I bought a big bag of beads from Amazon that had variety sizes. So I took the smallest one and I'm gonna thread it on to this wire. And we are going to make a cute little riser out of this candle lid. So I just put it on there and I'm keep measuring it to make sure I have enough of the beads to go around. And this is the first time I've ever used the wire with the beads. So it was a little tricky and I hope to get better at it, but I'm just kind of bending the ends and I'm trying to wrap that wire back into the bead so it will kind of secure the bead on there. And you can see some of mine come off the other end. 
So I'm just threading those back on and bending it so hopefully they won't come off. And I'm just kind of maneuvering my wire. Hopefully you can tell what I'm doing. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just playing with it. As you see, I had to clip it off and start over. <laughs> this is kind of hard, but um, you know, I got it done, just played with it. I'm sure there's an easier way. I just haven't found it yet. These things, you know, trial and error, y'all, trial and error. So I'm pulling it through, cutting off the excess with my wire cutters. And then I'm just gonna wire the other and wrap it around that one. It's not the prettiest look, but it turns out in the end. Definitely need to work on this technique, but here's what it looks like. And we can kind of put that to the back. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. So now I'm going to take it. Oh, I'm gonna let y'all know that I did put it on with my glue gun. I just glued some random spots, trying to cover up where the little wax, no, nah, where the little rubber seal was for the lid. Now I'm going to take my chalk paint and I'm just gonna give it a coat of chalk paint to cover it up. And it doesn't have to be a perfect job because we are gonna distress this and it doesn't have to be perfect, but I am trying to get in all those little cracks and grooves and crevices. So after that dries, I'm gonna take my antique wax and I'm just gonna go over, taking my brush, getting in all those crevices where the little beads are. And then I take my paper towel and wipe off the excess. and I do that all over the piece. And now we have a cute little riser. And this is how it looks. So for DIY number three, this is an item I picked up at the Dollar Tree. It was originally red and white and I spray painted it black and I just didn't like it. So what I do is I have this trick that I learned from watching Teresa at our Green Acres where you take candle wax to use to distress an item. So you put the candle wax, then you paint over it, and everywhere the candle wax is, it will distress it when you go to wipe it off. And what you do with that is that you take like a credit card, a debit card, gift card, something like that. But on this one, I actually used some sandpaper, but I just kind of roughed it up took my sandpaper and you see where all those distressed areas are? That's where all that candle wax was. And I love this technique. So we're not gonna stop there. Now we're gonna do another technique I learned from Teresa at our Green Acres and we're gonna add the faux rust to it using our cinnamon. And you can use Mod Podge, but I use this Elmer's Clear Glue, washable glue. And what I do is I just pour me some glue out and some cinnamon out and I just kind of mix it together and I just kind of randomly put it where I want it to look rusted and old. Some areas are darker and heavier than other areas. This is such a fun technique. I love this. Somebody asked me if you could still smell it after it dries. And unfortunately, no, you still can't smell the cinnamon after it dries. I wish you could. That would be awesome. But it smells good while you're doing it. And so I'm just getting the top and the sides. And I love the way this little thing turned out, and I don't think anybody would ever guess it was a Dollar Tree item. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Again, you can do as little as much personal preference on the, the faux rust technique. DIY number four. So these are some chickens that were given to me and they just do nothing for me. I do not like the color, but I do love that crackle finish. So I decided I was gonna try to paint them. This is my inspiration. This is a little chicken I already had and it too has that crackle finish on it, but I love the black and the white. See all that, I love the crackle and I didn't wanna cover that up. So I decided I would try to paint it using this as my inspiration. So what I do is I take some red paint and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of territorial beige and just kind of deepen it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna start playing and painting. And 
Y'all, this was so much fun. I did not expect to enjoy this as much as I actually did. But I just kind of started painting it. I ended up, I don't know where my footage went, where I show you where I painted the eye, where I painted his beak, where I painted the blue spots. I painted them black. I don't know where all that footage went, but I just painted and just customized it really and made it my own. And I had so much fun doing this. So where the blue is, I do end up painting black. I do end up adding some polka dots to it. Um, and just, you know, options are endless. You could definitely customize a piece like this. So this is what they look like after I painted them. And then I'm gonna spray a clear coat over them, this Krylon lacquer and seal that in, but we're not done. So now I'm gonna age them, and I took them, after the lacquer dried, I took the antique wax by Waverly, and I just started painting it on and wiping it off. And y'all, I love the way this turned out. It was better than I ever expected it, quite honestly. I love it. My thing was to focus on getting it really in all the grooves and just kind of really make it look old. This is the difference with the wax and without the wax. Love it. Love it so much. Can't say it enough. Love, love, love. So after I did this, then I do seal them again with the lacquer. And I love the way they turned out. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below which one was your favorite. If I had to pick a favorite, it would definitely be the little chickens. However, I love each and every one of the DIYs and how they turned out, but those would have to be my favorite. And I'm so glad that I took the chance and tried to paint them. And I absolutely love the way that they turned out. So, I wanted to let y'all know that I have been getting some comments that some of y'all are not getting notified of my videos and... I don't know what's going on with YouTube, how they mess with things, and some videos do great, some videos don't do so good, but you can count on a video from me every Wednesday without fail, and then I throw in some random videos here and there, but for sure Wednesdays. So, with all of that being said, please hit that little red subscribe button if you hadn't already. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Connect with me on Instagram, and until next time, bye y'all.